The Hitchhiker is a creepy episode. It's just an eerie experience from beginning to end. I dare say most Twilight Zone episodes don't reach the uncanny, unsettling heights this story succeeds at giving us. It's adapted from Lucille Fletcher's radio play which first premiered in 1941 and featured the voice of Orson Welles in the lead role. Fletcher's first husband was actually Bernard Herrmann, the composer of the first Twilight Zone theme and many of its episodes. He scored the original radio play and some of that music was used here in the TV version. Serling heard the radio play when he was a teenager and never forgot it. In his adaptation, he changed the main character to a woman named Nan, which was the nickname of one of his daughters. Fletcher wasn't thrilled about the gender swap, but most of the main plot points were kept intact. Nan Adams is a 27-year-old woman on a road trip from New York to California. After a tire blowout in Pennsylvania, she gets her car repaired and starts seeing a mysterious hitchhiker appear over and over. No matter how fast she drives, no matter where she goes, he pops up from time to time with the same blank expression and thumb outstretched in the air. Desperate to find a way to lose him, she takes the back roads off the beaten path, but eventually runs out of gas. After being refused fuel late at night, a sailor helps her along. Looking for anyone to drive with to protect her from the hitchhiker, Nan convinces the sailor to let her drop him off at his destination in San Diego. However, soon after, she tries to run over the hitchhiker upon seeing him again, and the sailor becomes disturbed by Nan's strange demeanor. To her dismay, he exits the vehicle and leaves her alone. Looking to hear a familiar voice, the young woman then makes a call that ends up being much more than she bargained for. This episode is of the regular 25 minute length the series ran for most of its installments, but because of the pacing, it feels much longer, and I mean that in a good way. It doesn't drag at all, it really feels like a movie, a Hitchcock movie to be specific. The looming sense of dread and overall ominous tone directly correlates with some of Hitchcock's famous work. Even some of the characters and a few shots remind me of the legendary director's style. Maybe that's why he tried to buy the rights to the story before Serling was able to snatch it up. In any case, director Alan Ganser did a great job bringing this story to visual life. Most of it was shot on location across highways and such, and that really helps it feel more authentic. Almost too authentic at one point for the production crew. There's a part in the episode where Nan gets stuck on a set of train tracks as an oncoming locomotive barrels toward her. The original shot Ganser wanted was directly on the tracks, with the train coming straight on. But when another train passed by the production crew heading the other direction, they realized that probably wasn't the safest idea and stepped off to the side of the tracks to get the shot. The hitchhiker himself and how they shoot him is chilling. He barely does anything and that's what makes him so creepy. It's just this weird, relentless stare. Sometimes he kind of smiles and he does have a few lines, but Leonard Strong as this character effectively gave me the heebie-jeebies. Ugh, that freaks me out. Those unexpected close-ups work perfectly. Heading west? No! No, I'm not heading west, I'm sorry. Inger Stevens does an excellent job playing Nan Adams here. Her frightened attitude keeps the character constantly and exponentially on edge throughout the episode. With the threat of the reappearing hitchhiker driving her mad, her discussions with the other characters are filled with anxiety. I've been seeing this man all the time, but he just stands there and he doesn't do anything. I think he's trying to rob me. Well, if he does, then you come back here and... I'll call the sheriff. No, please. Her pleas with the sailor to stay with her range from begging to even enticing him with a date. Anything to not be alone on the road. You can't go, you understand that? You just can't go. No thanks. Look, I like you. I thought that we could be friends and I'd kind of like for you to take me out. I'm sorry, ma'am. The inclusion of several narrations by the character also helped to flesh her out. Additionally, this was a way to keep a lot of the radio play's original dialogue in the story. The terror isn't formless. It has a form. He was beckoning me. It helps to hear these words as thoughts, since saying all this out loud wouldn't do the character any favors, as evidenced in a story like Where Is Everybody, where that character doesn't have much motivation to speak, but does so anyway. Steven's non-verbal acting is also top-notch. It's underplayed at times, then bursts out in these horrified expressions. Her sometimes dull demeanor seems like a conscious choice on the part of the director and actor, and it all makes sense in the twist. 
After the sailor leaves her to fend for herself, Nan makes a call to her mother so she can calm down, but she's apparently not home because of a nervous breakdown. What do you mean a nervous breakdown? Well, it's all taken place since the death of her daughter. Nan was killed just six days ago in an automobile accident in Pennsylvania. Her remaining emotion drains from her body as Nan vacantly returns to her car. I believe you're going my way. The Hitchhiker is meant to be a form of death or the Grim Reaper, and it's one of the better twists in the first season. This all being a ghost story from the perspective of the ghost was brilliant. I think people often associate the Twilight Zone with being creepy or scary, but there are a whole ton of episodes that don't aim for that at all. However, The Hitchhiker is one of those memorable stories that probably defined the series for a lot of folks. It's easy to see why. This is one to go out of your way to see. But it's just one stop on the winding road that is the Twilight Zone.